Welcome to China Horse Business, the one and only podcast focusing on the booming horse market in China, bringing to you by two experts of Chinese equine industry, Zoe King and Jojo Wang from Shanghai and Hong Kong, introducing China to the world. Hello, Zoe. How was your week? It was an exciting weekend. The Longjin Hong Kong International Races returns with the world's top horses and jockeys. The world class horse racing event features four international Group One races, offering a record total of Hong Kong dollar one hundred million prize money, as they guarded the unforgettable championship in Hong Kong. Congratulations to all winners! Talking about racing, followed the China Horse Owner Alliance announced in July 2021 the three-year domestic thoroughbred racing plan for 2022 to 2024, with total prize money of 60 million RMB in the next three years. It has attracted significant attention from the racing community, with no doubt that the China Horse Owner Alliance has pushed the breeding and competition of local thoroughbred horses to a new level. Yes, let's share more details in our China news today. In 2022, it's planned with 53 local horse races hosted by the China Horse Owners Alliance, and this includes 37 races for two years old, eight races for three years old, and eight races for four years old and above. Each race with prize money not less than 100,000 RMB. And the race with the highest prize money will be the China Horse Owners Alliance Breeders Cup. At the same time, as an exclusive benefit for all horses participating in these races, both breeders and owner must be member of the China Horse Owner Alliance. Furthermore, to enhance the fair and just basis of the races, the China Horse Owner Alliance conducts standardized supervision on the dancer and age identification process for the local breed horses. The alliance already certified 32 stallions from the members today. In the 2022 races, the China Horse Owners Alliance will still allow the offspring of no leak certificate stallions to participate. But the entrance fee for each race will be thirty thousand RMB extra than offspring from a certified stadium. Moreover, starting from twenty twenty three, only offspring from the certified stadium will be allowed to participate in entering the races. Glad to know the mane and horse racing rules and regulation are getting more international over time. Hey Zhao Yi, the weather here is getting cold now. I start to miss my favorite hot pots. <laughs> Talking about hot pot, I cannot think of anything better than hot pot from Chengdu. Today in the China Club session, let's introduce the Via Equestrian Team from Chengdu. Via's core team was built in 2012 with the persistent pursuit of the equestrian career. After eight years of hard work, Via Equestrian Club finally started in 2019, facilitated with 40 stables. It is an FN-certified examination center of the German Equestrian Association, which strictly implements the FN coaching and stable management system. All coaches in the club are FM certified at a different level and provide both English or German bilingual teaching abilities. Furthermore, the VR team also invested in warm blood breeding. In 2020, they purchased three grey stallions from auction. And these stallions will stay in Germany to further pursue their career. Last week, we interviewed Miss Zhou Ning from the world's leading pharmaceutical company Beringer Ingelheim from Germany. Today, in our China story, we will continue the second half of our conversation. So,、uh, Ning, you just said that you are expecting the Chinese equine market to become one of the largest market in the world next, maybe five, ten years. So, what are you going、mm. to do、uh, to catch up this speed in the Chinese market? What's your plan?、Uh, yeah, I think three things.、Uh, one is,、uh, like you just said, we need to bring more products. Uh, we have a lot of classic products that have been、uh, tested and proved in other markets, and、uh, we also have、uh, very innovative products that we can bring to this market.、Uh, so, first step is really bring the the product.、Um, in order to do that, we have to do the registration. 
Uh, I think uh, most people in this field also know how difficult this part is. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so we have to start as early as possible to, you know, bring those products into the plan and uh, put those projects as our uh, priority directly into the registration. So we are able to bring them into the market maybe in, you know, five, six years. Mm -hmm. And the second thing, um, like I said, uh, the we need to bring a lot of uh, knowledge and technology to this market because currently, um, as I said before, there's no drugs. There's uh, very limited uh, people who know how to diagnose and treat horses. And there's very limited um, resources and technology um, that can be used in this field. I know a lot of vets who have uh, experience on treating horses are However, when they travel to a, a farm or a club uh, that is far away from home, they cannot bring their devices. And on the, on the club, they don't have those devices to, to do mm -hmm. diagnosis. That has uh, hugely limited their ability to diagnose and treat, right? Uh, mm -hmm. I think that's one thing. And uh, knowledge is another thing uh, which is key because currently even the experienced vets um, they know better on um, joint treatment and injuries. Uh, some of them have experience on colic, but there are plenty of other things that they do not have uh, enough experience on or they don't even have the knowledge. So we also plan to uh, bring a lot of resources, uh, education, helping the uh, whole industry to grow, helping the vets to uh, develop their knowledge and experience while they are working in this field. And we also want to support the, um, the basic education because currently mm -hmm. if we look at the uh, education system, there are not so many vet schools are um, having the major for horses specifically. Uh, mm -hmm. And a lot of uh, vets currently working in equine field are um, only, uh, you know, they, they didn't have this major, so they just had a um, license for cattle or sheep or other species and they transferred into equine. So they learn everything while they're doing the job. Um, that's far, far from enough. Yeah. So we would like to support those um, education systems working together with the universities uh, to uh, really bring the knowledge, experience and technology to this market. And the third thing is uh, support. I think the first two are also support, but the third one is a little bit different um, mm -hmm. because we see uh, there are two parts of equine market. One is what I said, uh, the sport and uh, performance horses. With, uh, most of them are relatively high value horses and they also go for competitions, for trainings, and they need a lot of care and they are also more stressed in their daily job. Um, so the, the vets are also focused on this group. However, we also see there are more than 3 million horses that are uh, still living in the pasturing site in Inner Mongolia, uh, yeah. Xinjiang, et cetera, because we have a long history. Uh, so these people have still have their culture uh, holding the horses, although the horses are not any more used for uh, transportation or you know, uh, as a working equine, um, but there they are still a huge amount of them uh, living in this area. Uh, we mm -hmm. know the, this area do not have uh, the same econ economy as Shanghai, Beijing. Yeah. So people do not have uh, the money to spend on their horses. And also because they don't bring any, any more um, economy. So um, the, the spending on horses are very limited and uh, even close to zero. So yeah. we still uh, see there there is needs to support uh, this part of the market. And we know uh, it's probably not profitable for us, at least for now. <laughs> it's not possible. Mm -hmm. uh, but still, we want to support um, all of these uh, um, people living in this area as well as uh, their loved horses. So we, we plan to do um, CSR uh, projects as well. Uh, so far, we, we don't have very detailed plan yet, but uh, this is one of our uh, most important goal in the next years. Yeah. Wow, how great is it? It's really nice. And I would like to say uh, 
very looking forward to、um, the continuous growth of Beringer in the hands in Chinese equine markets. I think it will be a huge、Thank、contribution、you. to the whole industry, which will grow rapidly but healthily. Thank you very much for your time, Ning, and、uh, you, Ning, and delighted to talk to you. Thank you both. <laughs> Thank you very Thank you much for the invitation. As many industry experts like Alice Mack, Sarah Roll, and Elva Zhang had mentioned in our previous episodes, that the China equine market is multiplying. However, we still need more brands to allow the population to thrive. Agree, and just a kind reminder of our China Horse Business Live webinar is all over for 2021. If you are interested in speaking to our Chinese audience, our 2022 first webinar will be starting on the 10th of January. You can always contact us via email contact at wonderhorse.com if you have any inquiries. Right, I'm heading to the stable now. Please have a good day. Yeah, you too. Bye. Bye. This podcast is co-hosting by Zoe King and Jojo Wang, powered by Wonder Horse, a business solution provider focusing on Chinese equine market and a bespoke equine community in China.